One of Martin Luther's favorite topics, it seemed, was vocation. He talked a lot about vocation. What is at the heart of our understanding of our vocation as Christians? It's the understanding that we are free to live in Christ. Since our God is so clearly generous to us, don't look at your identity as an adopted child that now has to spend their entire life repaying their adoptive parents for the gifts that they've been given. No, look at your identity as an adopted child who is free to live, but to live in Christ. Think about it this way. We aren't obligated to activity. We are bound in relationship. So now what? Well, since you and Jesus are one, you're bound in relationship. When you work, Christ is working. When you give, Christ is giving. When you love, Christ is loving. We are his hands and his feet, his mouth, his ears. Because we have died and our life is now hidden with Christ in God. The most freeing part about the good news of Jesus is that you no longer have to win divine favor with God by what you do. He doesn't need your work. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your time. Okay, so I understand that God's done all the work. But I have time and I have money and I have work to do, so what do I do? Again, the question isn't what, I, what do I do, but rather what does God in Christ do through me? So here's how we should look at it. Here's the answer. Christ wears us like a mask so that he might be of service to others through us. God doesn't need you to tithe your money. It's your neighbor might. God doesn't need you to serve the church or serve in the community, but your neighbors do. God doesn't need you to commit time to Christian disciplines, but you and your family and your neighbors definitely do. You no longer live. Christ lives in you, and that's the best possible reality you could hope for. So again, God doesn't need every good deed. He doesn't need your dollar or your hour that you could offer. So he directs it elsewhere to our neighbor. <music>